field of work. Uh, we have 139, 140 of you and counting more people joining. We expect the numbers to grow just as usual. But today we're going to be taken through a very interesting session on what it means to build a strong brand. And why is branding important for that matter? Uh, but before we delve into that uh, uh, session through which my, my colleague Jen will um, lead, uh, please continue sending in your comments and questions through the chat box and particularly begin by introducing yourselves, tell us your institutions you're joining us from, the causes you're studying, your responsibility as a leader, and anything you might want us to know about your uh, presence here. It's, it would also be important to tell us if you've joined the other two sessions uh, previously hosted by the Corporate Career Academy on this cohort of Emerge Global. Uh, without much ado, I want to uh, salute my colleagues joining. Um, Jen Gikonyu, who is going to lead us in the session, but also on the sides we have Alex and Dorothy, uh, who are part of the meeting tonight. Once again, Karibu Nyote and uh, Jen, if you are ready, please take it up. Thank you, Philip. In a second. Good evening, everyone. I'm super excited to see all of us here. We have 150 of us. And our business today is to think about personal branding. As Philip has said, as CCA, we're very keen to ensure the transition from um, university or any higher institution of learning to the workplace is seamless. And we do this by offering information and ensuring that well, you, could, you understand the work and your full information that helps you. I'll be taking everyone's presentation. Philip said, my name is Jen Kikonyo. I love to do this because I'm a HR practitioner uh, for many years. Um, often I'll be on the other side looking for talent and looking from a pool of talent to see who can work for the various organizations. Wow. And, um, this pain uh, when I very people miss out on opportunities just because they're not ready. Uh, there's no work. It's true. It's true. Even if it's cool into the job market. But anyway, we're not having a conversation on recruitment and in school. So our business today is to understand what is the power of personal branding and how do you leverage your need as you exit, as you prepare to probably say, what's the business case? What's the fuss about this personal branding? I am sure, and anybody can tell me on the, on the chat, it's not the very first time you've heard about personal branding. It's a conversation that you see on LinkedIn. I, I'm hoping every one of you here is on LinkedIn. Um, it's a conversation you hear every other time. So what's this story? Why it was the business media accounting, I'm an engineer, um, I'm a teacher, right? I have done what in other courses. So why do we have personal branding? It's not something why is it an important topic to be discussing this time? Now, my business case would be depicting the world that you, the world of work, how it's evolving. And if in the last previous classes, you probably will pick, I'm doing a recap. 
so that I'm able to build the reason enough to keep you on a Wednesday evening talking about personal branding. What do I want you, you to take? You are home? breaking up. Like, sorry? Your voice is breaking. Okay, let me check my network. Let's go, German. One on the way. Okay, our friends, as Jen works on her internet, I'll be sharing some resources with you on uh, the chat box. Please be sure to either copy the link or dial on them. Some of them are um, uh, important things that would help you in your branding, in, in having um, a LinkedIn and a well-developed LinkedIn platform that would help you to connect with others. As, as students and young professionals seeking opportunities, branding in professional uh, sites such as LinkedIn is such an imperative. So uh, when you find the resources, please be sure to click it will give you some insights that would also be important towards your development and getting ready for the field of work. Abuna? Hi, Philip. Am I audible now? Yeah, sure. Yes, Jen. Yeah, uh, Clearer now. Go on. All right. I think I'll just go on. I was doing the introduction for anybody who didn't, who missed that bit. I am saying that the reason why we have the conversations at CCA uh, on Emerge Global is to ensure that you're prepared for the world of work. We're giving you insights to ensure that the transition to the world of work is easier. You know, sometimes the things that you face at the world of work are, are not taught in school. It's knowledge-based. And so CCA has seen that opportunity to ensure that we're equipping the students for readiness. So there is no disappointment or you don't get to your graduation is when you're learning or on your first internship or your first job is when you're realizing that the things you could have done differently, the skills that you'd have acquired along the way as you're doing the technical degree. But I'm sure universities have now uh, risen to the task. There's a lot of conversations between the industry and the um, industry and the unis and other institutional institutions of higher learning to ensure that these conversations are happening oftenly. Like I said, I think I want to build the case for why we're doing personal branding today so that it is in context. And uh, before I left, I was saying, there are a lot of conversations around it. Uh, if you're on LinkedIn, every other time there is a webinar on personal branding. So what's the fuss around it? I may not go, I'm sure you can do a lot of research on this, but I'll just give you my insights of things I've seen and why personal branding is something you need to take very seriously. Last time, uh, Philip uh, took us through what's shifting in the world of work. And I'm just trying to show you why then the, the conversation on personal branding is very important. And just to quickly highlight or recap for that, I would say that um, as the world of work, it is very involving and it's exciting because before we knew change as the only constant, but now we can say uh, certainty, the only certainty is uncertainty. 
the only the only certainty is uncertainty what do i mean by that there are rapid shifts in the workplace there are a lot of things that keep shifting that you need to be very agile to keep up with it but who taught you that you're very for example, I did tell you my story. Um, one of my career shifts is that I've been in a jungle. When I was in school, I studied um, Bachelor of Education. By the time I finished, I didn't have work. And so I had to quickly rethink uh, what I needed to do to be able to fit in the world of work. Before I even discovered that I should be in HR, I have done accounting, I have had done insurance, just trying to cope up to find out which space do I fit in? And that's the reality. The world of work is very, is, is characterized by a lot of shifts. For example, you find there'd be a lot of technological advances that are shifting the world of work. The consumer is changing. The consumer now is very knowledgeable. For example, I've had a lot of my experience in the insurance industry, and I can tell you there's a lot of innovation going on because now the consumer, the customer is demanding of the kind of services, the kind of products, the kind of prices. They're able to compare prices over different companies, and that never used to be, be before. Then that creates a radical shift on the people and how they do business. So I know you've heard people say, yes, we need to reimagine the opportunity is to reimagine the evolving world of where we are, whether you're an entrepreneur or whatever work you got to do, because the world becomes volatile, it's uncertain. You wake up every one day and the world has shifted. So as an organization, if we don't shift, then you're, you're done, it's competitive. Everybody's looking to work with the best in the market. So much as I'm talking about organization, I'm talking about people because organizations are made up of people. People is you, the potential, the emerging leaders come into the work environment. How do you get yourself ready for this change so that it doesn't complicate your transition to the world of work? The other thing to think about, and we've done this before, is to see how the world of work is changing. And just as a recap again, our work is done, it's changing rapidly. Now we have AI, we have robotics, digital tools, all that is changing how work was done. For example, chat GPT could um, enhance the productivity of a department. So what does that mean? If a lot of work was being done manually, now there are a lot of shifts. The shifts are happening to people because people were working and people were skilled to do some jobs. So there's a radical change. And in the earlier presentations, um, we did some of the jobs that are quickly going to be, uh, to, to start getting minimized because of the adoption of how work is getting done. Now, we even talked about the worker. The worker is changing. The worker is you and me, the person coming to the world of work. It's typically changing. Now you find people are very bold about what they're good at, their capacity. So they negotiate. Um, I may not give you my service full time. So I may give you um, three hours because I have several other companies to work for. Now, this conversation is being held because now every employer is looking for skill, who can do for me this? Who can transform what I'm looking for? It, the days are gone when it was about just qualification. I'm looking for who can do this. So if I get talent, if you're very good at what you do, then you're likely to get a buying for an employer and negotiate for different terms of working. Of course, you know about part-time. I know you probably are doing that. There's cloud sourcing, freelancers. The people want to come and do a project and move on to something else. All these are rapid changes that are happening. For example, if you're a HR like me, and these are the workers that you are having to work with, you have to rethink quickly the policies. You have to rethink how, um, how you're able to supervise productivity for people working across different areas that you must do. Did you learn that in school? No. So quickly you adopt what is changing. And then the workplace, like we all know, maybe thanks to COVID, things changed after COVID. Now you would work from anywhere. And one of the things that is an employee value proposition for a lot of organization is, am I able to work from the comfort of wherever I can work from? And now people are starting to think, what I need is productivity from you. So it begs again, what is your skill base and what is it that you're bringing to, um, to the market? So now you could be a first year, you could be a third year, you could be a, a finalist. The most important thing, sometimes we go through school, but we don't pay attention to what's the skill, what's the mastery of what I'm learning, you know, because that's what you bring with the table and you'll be tested. 
And even if you pass one interview, it may not be sustainable. And that is why even as you're going through school, whatever you're studying, you need to start looking at what is what are the emerging changes? What is changing in the world of work? Um, if you're an accountant, you know, there's a lot of automation happening there. So what are the skills? Which What are the trends of accounting? So that you quickly start doing certifications way in advance. If you're in IT, I was talking to a friend of mine who told me they did a master's in robotics. And then quickly that has shifted again. And they're rethinking, what else do I do? So one of the conversations we're going to be having about how you start building a strong personal brand is being alive to the things that are changing around you, not being ignorant. You know, four years happen so fast. So you may think I'm still in school, but if you're not conscious, then you may lose opportunities to start building your competency and for readiness for what you want to do. And I'm open-minded. I am not just talking about getting a job. Maybe days are gone when you're just looking for a job. Mm -hmm. When we talk about personal branding, we're just going to be talking about mm -hmm. if you're going to be an entrepreneur and doing some work, I need a skilled, a skilled person to do for me some work. You know, I've done, I've been in corporate setups, I've been a consultant. And for example, sometimes when I want to put my pitch for consulting, people may not look at the many years of what I've done. It could be an addition to it, but they will look at what are you able to do? Demonstrate to us that you can be able to do that. Now, if I do it right here, then the next job I get, it probably be a referral. And that has been part of my, my experience. People refer you for other jobs because they've experienced your, your capacity and your skill. So that's some of the things that are changing and they change who then we need to become uh, as we come to the world of work. Of course, you'll find conversations about diversity, equity, inclusion coming to the table, uh, much generation, you'll come to a place of work and you'll find you, you're Gen Z or you're almost Gen Alpha, you're finding you're working with your father, everybody is in the workplace. Who do you become to be able to achieve the productivity that you have? Of course, again, probably nobody will tell you in school that you can still work with people who are much older than you because companies at the end of the day is about results. It's about what is it that you bring to the table. Other things about the how, then people are trying to now work through how do we work together? You, my father, me, I'm here. We came in the same car. I'm going to IT. You're going to maybe marketing, how do we still work together? Um, then, of course, one of the other now drastic things that you find working is that you find, based on what I've said, there's, there's the disruption, then you find you're consistently being asked to acquire new skills. Is it pleasant? No. Now, when you have that realization that this is something you need to build, then it doesn't catch you by surprise. Now, what happens, like the play, people at the place of work, they struggle. You've done this degree, you're realizing for you to be competitive, for you to grow, you need this certification, the security, whatever else. And sometimes it's a pain point. And that's where you find the conversation probably even on personal wellness. There are a lot of challenges because with all those changes, they're affecting, I say it's organizations trans transitioning, but the transition about organization is about people. Customers are transitioning, but they're affecting how work is done and how work is done is about people. And people is about the skills that you bring to the table. So based on that, I think we're starting to see, um, so who am I and who am I becoming? In this whole conversation, we are having it early enough. Some of us consistently have it as we are growing in our careers. Is it the time you realize, you know what? I need to go back to school and do this certification. You know what? But for you, it's early enough to now start rethinking, projecting, and seeing what else can I do with myself? How do I, do I build myself up to be ready for the market? It, and readiness is defined by you. You're the only person who defines what needs to be done. Now, based on that disruption, then you find some skills start becoming more agile and favorable to people. With a lot of automation, uh, then what skills start emerging are all these and we went through them and why I brought this conversation because it will form part of how do you start forming a personal brand because you're starting to appreciate the in-demand skills 
the place of work. Mark you, as I talk about personal branding, I'm taking into consideration my audience today because personal branding is about also who is, who is your audience today? My audience today are student leaders or students who are in school and looking to be prepared for the world of work. So the presentation I have is around that. So skills to change, people are looking for people who are adaptable. Now, I've told you, demonstrated to you the, demo, uh, the disruptions happening in the world of work. So how adaptable are you? The fact that you've done this degree, does it mean you can't quickly shift to do another certification or will you be stuck, you know, I went to school and did that. I've told you personally, um, I'm way many years in the workplace, but I'm still building my skill base because I'm very clear where I want to go. So I'm consistently seeing what skills take me there. So being creative, it's, there are a lot of problems. When I talk about this disruption in the workplace, a demanding customer, globalization, then nobody has an answer. Even people who've been in the workplace for years. So are you able to bring your creativity to the workplace? And when you have all that, do you communicate it? Now, like I said, you find there are a lot of emerging needs in the workplace, you have different generations working. There are high pressure jobs because there, there's a lot of demands for results lots of demand from the customers. Customers want real-time solutions. So how do you manage yourself, your emotions? How do you work with other people in teams? Now you may get jobs where you're working with global teams. How do you still handle all those dynamics to be able to achieve your results? Those are things you now you need to start cultivating way early in advance because it's not about a degree. It's about uh, they're called soft skills or transferable skills that you need to build. Social capital, and we'll be looking at a, a bit of that, is about the skill sets you start building, about your networking, your, your ability to, to know that people are a resource. And we say the future is about partnership. There's a lot of partnership that goes on for you to be successful in the society. So would you start building those uh, skills to be social? And I know... A few of us who say, you know, I'm an introvert, I don't like people, I'm shy. Now, that is in the past. And I always say I'm the most shy person you'll ever find in the room or very introverted. But I've learned it doesn't serve me right. So I know when I need the energies to withdraw, but I know when I need to demand what needs to be demanded. So you've got to understand yourself then to know the person you are, how is it limiting your growth or how is it limiting the person you're showing off, uh, you're showing up as? Because as we're talking about personal branding, we are saying you're the product. You're the person I'm going to buy. If you come for an interview, even for internship, you bring yourself and I don't know you. So as you start speaking, you tell me who you are. I have a choice to either buy what you're saying or not. And I'm going to be showing you some of the things you'll start thinking about. The workplaces are looking for critical thinkers, you know, people who are analyzing issues um, and be able to derive trends, analysis, and all that. Now, skills, of course, um, yesterday I was talking to a friend of mine who is in the banking sector, and they told me, um, you know what, I think I'm going for a second degree or diploma in, in IT because they're feeling they're in banking, they're in credit, but the, work is, the world is moving very fast and they feel they're not productive enough because their peers are uh, literate uh, digitally and they're struggling. So sometimes it's not a decision, it's a decision you need to know what's happening, what is happening around where I want to go after school and what must I start working on. And that information is available. That information is available. So when we see all these emerging skills, over and beyond our technical skills, then we need to have just one action. And that is what I want to focus on. You must have a growth mindset. You must be somebody who thinks up and says, all right, I'm doing accounting. Let me scan the market and see what are account accountants doing. And that's why I asked here, is everybody on LinkedIn? Because you start seeing where is the world going? Or you get mentors, people who, who are able to help you shape What's happening in the workplace? And I believe as CCA, that's an opportunity we have because then we bring a lot more people here in different fields to just elaborate to you what's changing in their world and so that you're able to appreciate that you need to do the work early enough when, when you're still in uni. So my call, my first call to action is that you must have a growth mindset. Irrespective of what course you're doing, you must think, what do I need to start 
doing differently and what is disrupted in the area I am in. For example, if somebody is in HR here and I'll tell you the HR I did uh, five years ago is different. The conversations have changed. These, there are things I can't do, you know, and that's what I was taught in, in school. Things have changed. So I've also, I have to upskill and see how do I add value on uh, sustainability in an organization? How do I look for talent that can sustain the business? So consistently growing yourself is be fundamental as you grow your personal brand. Now, going forward, so I've talked about what looks like is emerging and it could look like an elephant, but you know what? In the middle of every challenge, in the middle of every change, there is an opportunity. So today I'll talk to you about personal branding and that is opportunity. You know, how do you leverage on a strong personal brand? in a very competitive market where there's disruption, how is this one thing? Like I said, we'll have many topics around uh, preparation and readiness for the future of work. But today, allow me to talk in a few words from a HR perspective, how do you leverage on a strong personal brand as you prepare for the world of work? Now, when you talk about personal branding, like I said, I'm sure everybody knows about this. So let's have this conversation. What is personal branding? It's how you stand out and differentiate yourself. As a HR, you'll all come to an interview. It's an internship, job shadowing. I'm sure you must have gotten a question. Are you interested? Somebody wants to work with the best. So how are you going to stand out you know, and differentiate yourself? You probably had 300 people in a class. So what's going to make you different? Now, from my experience, like I've said, I sit in lots of interviews, you know, and sometimes it is, you may never have an opportunity to give feedback to everybody on how they performed. But some of the deal breakers are around how you present yourself, period. By the time you're called for an interview, just know that there's a lot of selection that has been done and you could do the job. You have the technical capability to do the job. So what's the missing point? Now, one of the things that you start, you need to start working on is to differentiate yourself, what differentiates yourself? And I'll pick some of the challenges that I've seen and probably things you could start doing differently. Now, um, if you see on that screen, I love this screen a lot, a lot, because it tells me you see that for every journey you start, you must have the end in mind. You must need to know, I'm a first year, so what? In four years, whom do you want to become? Where do you want to go? What are your aspirations? You know, if you don't ask yourself that question, nobody else will do it for you. So you must be succinctly very clear. Where do I want to go? Yeah. I know sometimes you may find yourself in a course that probably you're feeling, you know what? But like I said, I'm one person who have done several courses as I'm trying to find out who Jane is. But finally, I landed but it is work. It's a growth mindset. So where do you want to go? If you're doing BA like I did, I mean, where do you want to teach? Is this your aspiration? Uh, what is being disrupted in the curriculum? Are you going to be some of the people who stand out in this? What do you need to do differently? Where is that information? You can never go where your mind has not been. You know, I don't remember who said that. So you must first be very clear even as we're talking about personal branding, whom do you want to be? What skill set do you want to have? And one way of doing it is being clear. For instance, if you are in an industry and you have people you admire, not, be, not because of many things, maybe because of the, the kind of energy impact they bring. And you would start saying, when I become an engineer and graduate, I would want to make an impact like this. I would want people to talk about me like this because I'll be able to deliver on a few things. So the first, second action is have, as we're talking about personal branding, you must be very clear what is it that you want out of this conversation. As you graduate in the next five years, in the next 10 years, holding all factors constant, what would you like to be? That becomes a navigating roadmap even as we think about personal branding. So you've seen, uh, when you talk about branding, we're talking about being, co I mean, studying out, you know, there are many definitions of personal branding and we're in a knowledge economy. So you can even Google right now what's personal branding. 
it's who you are. It's who people talk about you. you some people say, if you leave this room, what will people describe you? And like I showed you the pencil, whatever, is who stands out. And so as, as, as Roy Kinyua, how do you stand out? You know, how do you stand out? Now, you can never go, you can never do very well if you don't know who you are. So the first place, um, and as you're in uni, you need to start consolidating and understanding yourself. Who are you? You know, you need to be self-aware. You need to start itemizing. What are my strengths? What do I do very well? Or, or what are the places where I have challenges? Like I said, the people who are very good technically, but they can't, they can't talk. They can't even do a presentation in class. So you know what, if you can't do a presentation in class, how will you present yourself to a panel in a boardroom or on a virtual call? You know, common sense. When you realize you have a challenge, then you start working on it, you know, start to do small discussion group and showing up yourself. If you have strengths, then show up loudly in what you're able to do. What are your personal values? What do you value? Right now, you need to start mapping your skills. What skills are you gaining? Like I said, there are so many learn learning platforms. Some are free. What kind of skills, what kind of qualifications are you starting to, to put together? Yeah, like I said, you only do this when you know where you're going, when you have an end in mind. So this is work you need to start doing. Now, the flip side of this, and as part of positioning your brand, you'll find people coming to interview and you can almost guess. I don't know how I try to miss this question, but people will always ask you, tell us about yourself. And it is one question that's a deal breaker because people cannot say who they are. You don't know yourself. And if you can't tell me who you are, how else are you going to tell me all the th other things you're going to do for this organization? So, so as an action, start finding out who you are. Um, the Career Academy has assessments. Assessments are also very good. They start helping you know how do you show up. Uh, if you're an introvert, I mean, there are disc assessments, there are career assessments. Expose yourself to that. And some of them are free. But also another way of getting to understand who you are so that you position yourself is feedback. People will always tell you who you are. People will always tell you, you, you never show up on time. And probably in an interview, I've seen people miss out on opportunities because they didn't keep time. So start learning who you are. There's a lot of information reflecting back to you on who you are. That is very important knowing who you are as part of personal branding. Now, the next thing is you must master your craft. You know, like I said, you could go to school four years, but you don't master anything. You're very general. Now, it shows up. You'll go to an interview room and people will ask you basic questions. Now, the future is changing that people are looking for competency-based interviews. People will ask to demonstrate the skill you have. You'll be given a case study. Now, if you don't have mastery, it is gonna show. So why would you spend four years in um, an institution, but you don't have grasp of anything? So my call to you is that you must know that, like I said, you have painted the future and what you would really like to do. And you have known uh, for me to be a master accountant, I need to start working on this. I need to start my CCA. I need to start my CPA. You're starting to understand. I need to know my craft so well that anytime I maybe go to an interview or any other place I'm selling my skill, I have mastery of my craft. And guys, it shows. When you know what you're saying, it shows. And it will be the deal breaker. It's competitive. The person who can demonstrate they understand what they, they are doing is important. Now, how do you start these skills? I know somebody is asking, you know, in school, I had these opportunities. And I would say, well, you know, I've talked, I mentor a lot of young people. They say, well, where do I have experience? You know, I'm on a casual job. Now when will I get experience? There's experience right there. They are volunteering jobs around you and you start building the skill set. You remember what I've said? They are emerging skills that are starting to separate people. It's about your communication. It's about your critical thinking. It's about your teamwork, your social acumen. People want to work with people that are driven and they can show that. How do you start it right now? Volunteer for team activities. Sometimes these skills, 
you build them based on your clubs, whatever community you are in. You're in a Toastmasters, probably you want to build um, your communication skills. For example, I'm a Toastmasters. I'm this many years of communication, but I still join a club where we speak because I want to take my communication to the next level. So once you're aware that there are things you need to work on, then there are many opportunities around you to do that. Now, you find even in schools, we've been to uni unis where we're doing career fairs, but you find a quarter. There's a place we went and we found, uh, I think I was with Philip and Alex, we found we were 15. And I'm like, okay, fair enough. We are here. We had to work with the people we have. But I'm like, this guys should know some of this information. They will not get anywhere. But it's fine. It's fine. But take take opportunities. Some of the things that people will come to tell you in a career fair, you won't get it anywhere. And you probably will pick one thing that could be the thing that separates you. Now, we've talked about continuous learning. Once you know where you want to go, this, the, the career you want to partake, it's an entrepreneurship, it's a hustle, whatever you want to call it, you must be a master of your craft. Continuous learning, uh, doing a lot of research, new technologies are filling up this place. Uh, know that. And one of the things now you can start churning out is your thought leadership. Now, I'll give you an example. I was once setting up a department, a division of data scientists, and we really wanted very uh, people who, who have a, a bit of an understanding. And since we were not getting a lot of um, people who've done that in undergrad, we needed to build. And there's this lady who had just reached out to me. They had come for a career fair. We met, they took my number. So we connected on LinkedIn. And just like that, I started seeing they are posting a lot of things about data science. They're doing a lot of research and posting things on their LinkedIn. So when these opportunities came to get entry-level positions, you know what? She was top of my mind. And I could already see she's doing a lot of research. She's not worked. She was a fourth, fourth year. And she's being able to produce even information that I didn't know that I could work with. And therein, she got a position and she's doing very well. So master your craft. Uh, develop your skills now, see where you can do it, and also start saying what you've learned, you know, on your LinkedIn or your other pages, social platform, or whatever else. If you meet people in class and there's a discussion, be the, the leader of that discussion, because as you practice, you get better, and people will start feeling, hey, but now, this guy knows his stuff. This, this, this person knows their stuff, yeah? The other thing is, as you build all these skills, there's a time that should come when you tell it, your story. Tell your story could be in interviews, it could be in a deal, it could be in anything. You know, there are many opportunities out here. You need to be able to tell your story. And this guy says, part of the emerging skills of, you know, what we've just told you are emerging skills of for the future is communication, your ability to communicate. So you need to develop your communication skills because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. I don't need to explain that. You come to an interview, you ask questions, you tell the world who you are. You'll tell the world what's your mastery of content. You'll tell us, or anybody wanting to recruit you, why do I want, why can I work with you? I'm looking at your emotional level, your engagement. I'm looking at your eye contact. I'm looking at your clarity of thought. I'm looking that you know yourself so well. You know, as something like a CV, somebody will give you a CV. They didn't even look at it. So you're asking them, by the way, this CV on this page, what do you really mean by that? Clueless. And like I said, it's a competitive world. So how do you know your staff? And how do you tell the world, what is your value proposition? What can I do for you? Why me? What is it that you're going to get over and above my BCom? Everybody else who's done BCom. Maybe I'm very good in project management. I can demonstrate where I've done that. Maybe it was a charity institution. Maybe I'm very good in um, leadership. I'm a choir master and I lead teams. People are looking for authentic stories, authentic stories of who you are when they're looking for experiences. You don't have to paint it. You just need to say it as it is from wherever you do it. So as you start knowing yourself, mastering your skill, doing a lot of research about the things you need to know, then start telling your stories on your pages. If you're called to speak somewhere in your unis, in another uni, show up, show up for your craft because then people start associating with, with you. Now, there's this guy who said, you like, if people like you, they will listen to you. 
But if they trust you, they'll do business with you. And that is the level of personal branding you want to be, where people can engage you for business, people can engage you for internships, for any work. Like I said, remember the imagine in-demand skills, like emotional intelligence, is about being able to understand your stakeholders and how can I work with different people who are not like me. But you understand emotions of other people once you understand yourself. So those are skills you need to start building, right? People will tell you you are hot-tempered. If that's the feedback you have, you need to start working on it because the future is a partnership. The future is about people. And trust is a currency. Trust is a currency in the world of work. People are looking for people that they can trust business as business partners for any deals, for anything you do, even employment. I'm looking into your eyes and saying, can I really work with this person? I can get it from the way they speak. The authenticity is everything. Now, you can see these things are not taught in school. The things you keep learning by being available for such conversations and you start learning from different people. Today it will be me, uh, it will be the next person. Then as part of personal branding, it's how you package yourself for the engagement. I know sometimes you say, you know what, I don't care, dress is just a story, you know. But guys, let's be real. If I find somebody at the reception, there's somebody I want to work with. You can define your style, but there's a person you appear to me and I want to work with you. So package for yourself for any engagement you want to have. How do you want to show up? Again, like I said, where do you want to go? So if you know where you want to go, you need to dress that way. You need to dress for the position you want to go to. And dressing, I know, it, it define it. You know, define what dressing is for you because you're very clear. I want to be the most sought after accountant. I want to be the most sought IT person. So how do I show up for the engagement? You have to be prepared fully for conversations you want to engage in. Preparation means you have mastery. If you're sending documents like CV, you know them, they're well done. If you're doing cover letters, they're so well done because sometimes people will find your documents or your LinkedIn page before they find you. So what is your level of prepare, preparation for that? Be, and be confident. I see some people coming for interviews. Man, you know, even the energy level, by the time you're done with two questions, panelists are looking at each other like, really, how will this one work? We are hiring you for a customer engagement, but the energy you already bring to the room is zero. There's somebody else who may not be as sharp as you are, but they calm, they're confident, you know, they're putting their A game, they're showing you that give me this job, I'll do it, right? And these days there are many different versions of interviews. So for each, be prepared, be confident. And housekeeping is about how you show up. People don't keep time. You've been given time, you know, just arrive earlier. It's the one day, but you still. You know, you start calling CG traffic. Everybody knows this traffic. So what do you do about with that information? Those are small deal breakers to your personal branding. And sometimes I don't know you. People don't know you. So from the first moment of truth is how they encounter you. So how do you want to be encountered? That's very important. Now, as you build this personal brand from knowing yourself, knowing that I need to stand out, Knowing that I need, I, I need to know myself. Knowing that these are skills I need, yeah? And knowing that I need to give my story, um, then these are opportunities for you. There are enough mentors. If you're on LinkedIn, I get reached out by many people on a story or a conversation or a question. People think people are mean, but people are willing to give a lot of information. And I say, if one person says no, there are a thousand others who will say yes. So never give up. On the first no, I was talking to one of the mentees and they said, you know, I wrote this um, application and I was given a regret and they were very down. I said, I lived many years before looking for a job. I could even do a hundred. So learn to move on quickly. And that's why the imagine skill of resilience, ability to bounce back, creating a brand that I can bounce back irrespective of what I have faced today. Tomorrow is a better day. I'll show up. I'll show up in my A game. I'll still show up for, for that interview for another one. I'll still call that anchor I don't talk to. I'll still look for opportunities. I'll go to LinkedIn and see who is where I want to be and see whether they can have a conversation. And you'll be surprised at the opportunities you have in mentors. Create a social brand that people can engage with. If you have a skill, if you have something you're researching, then you'll be able to post it. Then um, the other way to position your brand is just... 
when you depict where you want to work in future, learn about companies, learn about engagement. If somebody calls you, find out who they are. I mean, many things. There's a lot of information that can help you package yourself better. I've talked about CV. I've talked about uh, uh, application letter. It could be a pitch letter for business, for a contract, for a tender. Show up. All these are opportunities for you to show up to the world. What is it that you bring to the table? Now, when all is said and done, and I'm winding up, you need to take care of your wellness. So I've seen many people, um, very brilliant people, but because of a few setbacks, they lose themselves to many things. So take care of your personal wellness, be physical, take whatever you can do about it, emotional, mental, social, especially on mental wellness. So you, I've seen people even get the first job, but they can not sustain it. I mean, people start getting to drinking, doing a lot of other things. So what is wellness for you? Even as you position your brand out there, you could get a very good job, but you may not sustain it if you're not well. You could be the most brilliant person, but your mental capacity, if you don't have the energy levels to do the things you want to do, um, you need to push yourself maybe to do several courses. Maybe sometimes you need three more hours, five more hours to do a certification. Then you need a lot of energy. So how well are you taking care of yourself? If I don't talk about anything else, this is a deal breaker. How well you are mentally or not. Yeah. Then um, as I wind up, I'll just say that it's very competitive. We know that dare to stand out you find lines um there are a lot of cues of cvs but if you start doing something bit and bit bit and bit you know we say a journey of a thousand miles starts one step at a time if this information helps you and you start either crafting a very good linkedin page account if you're a finalist or wherever you are start seeing what conversations are happening you'll get a lot of information a lot of it now, for example on linkedin imagine if issues, then you start preparing yourself what certifications, what mentors, what career fairs are happening around my community. Feel yourself with that, that translating to a stronger brand. Then as you research, as you have more information, tell the world about it, um, about the things you are. Somebody will be impressed by what you write. And when opportunities come, they will remember I think I saw this profile. I want to reach out to them. So dare to stand out. Um, dare to stand out. Um, and you'll do well. For every conversation you hear, for every effort you put, eventually it's going to pay returns. So, like I said, a lot of these things, you don't necessarily learn them in school, but they're fundamental. So work on them. And I can assure you, there are a lot of opportunities the world has immense possibilities. We need just to be a little, push a little bit harder, be resilient. Um, when we get setbacks, rise up quickly. But I can tell you, opportunities are coming. They're emerging. There are jobs that will be in 2025 that were never there. By 2030, there will be new jobs. So there is value to keep looking at trends and just reimagining yourself. And like I started, the game is reimagining. Imagine who you want to become because the opportunities are tra transcending and you can always um, get the opportunity by putting your personal brand, mastering your craft, showing up and doing all the little things that you need to do. Thank you very much. Over to you, Philip. Maybe you can let me know if there are any questions. Thank you very much, Jen. Um, such a brilliant presentation, and I hope uh, all of us in the session have benefited from those insights from a seasoned HR a professional, um, talent manager, and uh, a mentor for that matter from Corporate Career Academy. We have been happy listening to you, Jen. I will give this opportunity to uh, the participants here to ask questions. Please be sure to um, raise your hands. If you have a question, a comment, then we'll give you in the order that you come in. 
Thank you very much for those comments. Keep them coming. I can see insightful. Thank you very much. So beneficial. Thank you, great insights, Jane. Very insightful. Thank you very much. Hello. Caroline says, thank you very much. Okay, I see some hands raised. I can Please, see the top for it. Uh, go ahead. I'll start Sorry, with I Marcy. Marcy, please unmute and ask your question. Hello, am I audible? Yeah, Marcy, yes. yes. Okay, my name is Marcy Mwindi. I wanted to ask how can I join Corporate Career Academy? Thank you very much, Masi. Uh, Corporate Career Academy is open to all. Alex will guide you, but please join the WhatsApp channel, which would be an easier way to communicate. But Alex, take note. Thank you. Uh, Ramadan, please unmute and ask your question. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm Wakesa Ramadan from the University of Embu, currently the Secretary General. Uh, I'm kind of actually have some kind of two questions to the presenter of the day today. Uh, first, let me actually start by congratulating her for and also saying thank you for the nice presentation and enlightenment to us. Uh, first question, actually, uh, perhaps I will uh, ask. I'm totally concerned about. Uh, I was concerned about. Uh, he, he, she actually mentioned that she did PA education and. Uh, she did some several short courses like uh, HR and kind of stars. So they, there comes a challenge to some of the people also here that they cannot actually afford uh, to cater for themselves actually to try for such short courses. Perhaps they might be willing to do that, but uh, due to shortened resource or a limited kind of uh, they lack an opportunity. Is there a way that this kind of people could actually secure finance or resource for them actually together for such short courses? Because I actually I do quite understand that we need to be diverse in, in our thinking and try different fields. We don't, we never know, you never know where your fat is. And the next question is that uh, personally, uh, personally, I, I, I try to define the opportunity. I, I saw such a question on the screen, this place, too. what is an opportunity? In my own view, I try to convince them by a lot. Newton, can you mute? Okay, thank you, Ramadan. I'll ask Victoria to ask her question. Victoria Muli, go ahead. Maybe, maybe let me let me get into the second question. There is an interrupt from the other side. I don't know. Hello, Newton. Okay, so uh, oh, my ahead, last man. question. My last question was: uh, I, I try to define an opportunity as maybe, for example, you are going for an, uh, an interview. And you get that among us, the panel, there is a quite number of people that you are well connected, maybe from family level, you are quite well related. That's how I do try to define my uh, opportunity, the term opportunity. Otherwise, in this corporate world or this evolving world, as I is without connection, you are going nowhere. I think I, I would request some kind of assistance to convince me about that. Kindly, thank you. All right, thank you very much. I'll start with the final one. Eh? I, I I seem to have missed the name. Would you remind me of the name? Um, yeah, um, Wekesa Tibo Ramadan. Anyway, sorry? We, Wekesa, okay. So first things first, eh? Let me tell you, Akesa, you must shift your mindset. And I would really wish to have a conversation after this with you. If you really hold up that 
the, you must get to an interview because you know somebody. Honestly, it's not a fact. It's a story. I can tell you and I can share my work experience even to today. There is no opportunity I've ever gotten because I know somebody. Because they are family or from my Madam, you are breaking up and you are saying very important things. Or anything. Your voice I've is I've only breaking. gotten referrals people by even. Okay, let me see what to do about my network. Meanwhile, Philip, you can take it on. Okay, very Thank well. You. Um, let's hear from Victoria. Please unmute and ask your question. Hi, Philip. Um, you had talked about sending uh, some links on the chat, on the chat box on how to improve our LinkedIn pages. And all I can see is you are sharing um, on joining the WhatsApp channel. So I, I don't know if you've already shared or you're going to share via the WhatsApp channel. Thank you. Thanks, Victoria. I did share, but uh, in case that you missed that, Alex is going to share that via the communication after this uh, um, session, but I'll also just take you briefly through a session less than 10 minutes towards the end of this. Okay, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Let's hear from Franklin. Ondego. All right, much thanks. Uh, good evening, all. My name is Franklin Ondego. Uh, I'm a final year student, University of Nairobi. I serve as a classroom for my class for the last three years. So my question to our presenter today, Madam Jen, uh, from an HR perspective, now that you normally receive applications in bulk, what normally do you consider in such kind of bulk applications? Especially those are that are being sent through email. How uh, much thanks? Okay. Frankly, maybe I can just pick that up. For any advert, you see the minimum requirement for a job. So irrespective of the many CVs you get, um, it could be manual, it could be the system that is configured in a way that for each job, then it allows the minimum qualification as per required. But I can tell you, and especially if you're in a, in a value-based organization, we go through all the CVs to ensure that you get the right um, profiling. And sometimes you have the first shortlist, you get to the second shortlist until you're able to get a shortlist which you can work with. So that's the process and that's what I've worked with. And I know there could be, we're in a community, there are probably times when people say somebody didn't look at the CVs. We're in a community and a society, but like I said, if, for example, you've applied for a job in one organization, it's not come through, there'll be another one that will, will come through for you. So, and also talking to us. So, I hope, frankly, that, that helps. Thanks, Jen. Let's hear from uh, Emma Naibe. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Hello, can you hear me? Evening. Yes, Emma, go ahead. Yeah, yes, my question is, oh, what about the, the slides? The slides for the past two se sessions we had, how can we get it? How can we get them? Thank you. Thanks, Emma. Uh, those will be shared as part of the resources. Alex uh, will handle that. Thank you. Let's hear from Kirira. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I, Victoria, the speaker, has really talked about how Please you can enhance your... Please introduce yourself, tell us your institution and... Um, the responsibility you serve in? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Onesmas Kirira. I am a student at KCA in my third year, uh, undertaking accounting and a part-time CPA student. 
I am a student leader and a class rep. So I have three questions. Um, Victoria has talked about how uh, you can use the resource LinkedIn to enhance uh, the profile, making it impactful and engaging between you and your employer. I was asking if she could share any guides or resources on the link and if not, where I can get the recording so that I can go through this again. My second question is if you find that there are, I don't know if it's a mentality or it's true that some schools regarding on the prestige, there are more likelihood for you to get called on to or you have a greater chance of getting into an interview. Is this true or and what more can I know about? And where can I get more information on this? Thank you, Kirira. Um, I've actually shared the links on uh, on the chat box, but still uh, they will be shared to you uh, with you via um, a communication from CCA. Um, look at the shared screen, which basically guides you on a profile visual guide. Um, what your current profile on LinkedIn should look like. Um, talking about a current photo, your location, a summary of uh, what you are in terms of your career, highlights, experience, uh, pictures and videos, which I know uh, this generation really like, education, endorsements, recommendation, and interest. But this very first uh, uh, slide is, is more important. Um, in terms of what you need to have, the basics, and, and how to build that profile then would be included in the details of uh, what we are sharing with you. Thank you. Um, we have more people still in the queue wanting to ask questions. Brian Mutua, please unmute and ask your question. Um, greetings. I believe you can hear me. Loud and clear. Proceed. Thank you. My name is Brian Mutua Musioki. I'm a student of the University of Nairobi, currently a student leader from the Department of Political Science and Public Administration. I work with the Nairobi City County as an education consultant and an attaché to the Rwandan Embassy here in Kenya. And uh, my main question is, um, there are two, I have two questions. The, the first one is, um, can, can Jin kindly just give us a case scenario where a personal branding strategy failed and what lessons uh, or experience did she get from that? Is there an, an instance? Because from the beginning till now, we've talked about the good and, and the merry about personal branding, but are there instances where maybe personal branding has gone too far or failed, and then also, um, in the light of the protest, the 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 Gen, the Gen Z protest, we 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 saw a lot of young people coming out to be recognized, and um, I I personally felt like there was a backlash and they failed in their branding. How can you help, or just a few tips on a young, uh, politically um, interested? Yeah, student leader, how can they brand themselves better so that they can be accepted for who they are? Thank you. Okay, Philip, maybe you can Thank take you, a second Brian. question. Could I'm we sure have you have well. Okay, Jen, please proceed. I was saying you could handle the second question about branding for Gen Z uh, and all that. But I could answer this one on um, where did personal branding uh, fail? You know, uh, how do I put it, Brian? If you're building yourself, if you're building your capacity, there's nothing wrong about that. You're doing the right thing. It's the needful thing to do. Not doing it is what is a challenge. Now, you've seen Philip put in um, probably a LinkedIn, uh, a LinkedIn profile. How you do it is very important. What stories you tell and how you tell them is very important. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're not doing it the right way, for example, if you're doing a profile that is not uh, right or is not 
quality or the stories you are telling are not quality, that could be messing your personal brand. But just like any other, you can't say now you're a master communicator, you have done a bad thing, you know, unless probably because even if you're communicating and you go to a place, you know when to, because of your emotional intelligence, you know when to communicate, when to stand out and when to hold back. So these are called life skills. All these things we're talking about are life skills that build you. Now, probably as you're doing that, because you're in a community, other people may not be at that level. As you grow yourself, other people are not growing their self, themselves. So sometimes you will appear like you're sharp, you're more intelligent, and people become insecure. You could have a leader who is not self-aware. So even this person who is a leader and is self-aware, then you can have conflict. And now, since you know yourself, you're able to know emotions of other people and how to regulate them. To that end, that's what I would say, that sometimes when you start working on yourself, you could shine a better than even maybe people that are senior than you, and that could become a conflict. But then you're aware. You're aware and you can also see their insecurities. And because they're in positions of maybe power, they can start holding you back. And that's why... I'm sure you've heard now that you have quite a bit of exposure. People leave their leaders. People don't leave organizations. Probably you have heard that. Because of that, you may be sharp, you've grown yourself, and people feel intimidated by your communication skills, maybe the way you show up, the way you dress up, the way you articulate issues. People are going to be uh, held back by that, and they could hold you back. To that extent, that's how, what I would comment. Over to you, Philip, about Gen Z's and how they would have branded themselves better. Thank you, Jen. Oh, thanks, Jen. Uh, I'll come to that, but before then, then uh, let me listen to Jafet Ogelo, who has a question. Okay, Jaffet seems to have a challenge, but uh, as he adjusts his audio, I have been projecting a screen here about LinkedIn and why it's important. Now, there is this number here, 48 million students globally are on the platform. The most fundamental question, even for Brian asking about Gen Z's, is how many of the Gen Z's are part of the 48 million students on LinkedIn today? I'm sure that we all have Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, uh, probably X, because that's where the conversation has been in Kenya. But do we have professional platforms and professional profiles on LinkedIn? So how can we brand ourselves better as Gen Zs? It's not bad to have all those social media platforms that I've mentioned, but are you on a professional platform such as LinkedIn? And why is it important? We are saying that one in every three students online or on LinkedIn have either viewed jobs or applied for jobs. At two years, but in every three, in every second, every second, there are three people that are hired on LinkedIn. Every one minute, there are eight people hired. And there have been four, million and over persons recruited or hired via LinkedIn in the last 12 months. Do you find this a platform where you want to be? Is it important for your generation? Is it important for uh, those that we are calling Gen Zs? We are talking about a community of a billion strong. We're talking about 63 million companies. We're talking about 20 million open jobs at any given time and 131,000 schools uh, offering over 41,000 skills and learning opportunities for free on LinkedIn. So 
if you ask me, that's the branding that Gen Z's, particularly students and student leaders like UN Career Ambassadors need. I will take this opportunity to usher in the next person to ask the questions. Um, and let's take three more as we conclude. I see Japheth Ogelo, are you back? Is your audio working? Okay, good evening, I think. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, Japheth, go on. Okay, I'm sorry for the previous encounter. So my name is Japheth Otieno, a former student, Machakos University, a graduate and accountant. So I wanted to ask about, um, so there's this question the presenter was talking about, about when an HR asks about who are you or to present about yourself. So which kind of answers should we give? Because sometimes we find ourselves going there with that zeal, knowing what to say. And then later on, you are shredding or something. So I think I would like to be helped in that. Thank you. Jeff, you are a bit low, but I hope Jen captured your question. Uh, am I leaving anyone else? Daniel? Yes, uh, thank you, Philip. Um, yeah, just a question to uh, Madam Jen. The one, we've seen so many youth. Uh, my name is Daniel, Daniel Mwendo, uh, currently serving as the president of the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. And yeah, I've interacted with the youth um, and even including myself. We see moments where we put in effort and you know, you've know you put in the best in, in packaging and preparing yourself for the job space. But then when you get out, it's it's not certain. You know, that space is kind of uncertain that um, you don't know where to start, right? Uh, so probably we could get advice on yeah, you've done so much. You've you've built a wonderful LinkedIn page. Um, you've explored life on campus. You know you've done as much as you could. But then now it's about navigating. Where you're not sure. Uh, you've done your degree on on this particular field. You've done short courses on several other fields. But then you're still not certain with um the kind of job that you want to do that brings satisfaction. Because most of the time it's not even about um the course that we do. But we're trying to find meaning in in anything that you want to do, yeah. So maybe we could get advice on that. On how do we manage uncertain times? Do we still just go ahead and do it and say, um, life, you know, life will just align itself as we move on? Or how do we get purpose and and meaning in in what uh, what we've studied? And then just to now probably an insight to everyone who's present today. I find that there are some key things that um, we need to do, you know, to be what you're being told today to, to stand out and do all these things. Because one, one is packaging. It's even as you walk, even as you speak, even as you interact with people, um, there's a way that you package yourself and, and someone will notice you. Because the truth is, most of the jobs are earned through referrals. And that's when we talk about, you know, reputation is key. The, how has someone interacted with you before? that they can actually recommend you to, to someone else and that you won't actually fail them, yeah? So even the packaging, how do you how do you present yourself? Do you present yourself in a way that uh, people can trust you? And and people judge, that's the truth, from, from the appearance, from the outlook, from how you how you dressed, how you interact with people, even the kindness, they can tell the character, right? So uh, because they are pretty sure that you can get the, you know, outstanding academic qualifications. Every graduate can potentially get that. But then they're also looking at what else when it comes to personality. And this, these are things that people just observe and they can tell. And then someone gets, you know, a job opening and they can say, oh, I know someone who can, you know, someone who is kind, someone who can, can actually do this thing. And then the other thing is on social capital. I had someone talk about connection and but here's the thing, guys, that um, the social capital that we actually truly desire is the kind of networks that you're building today. And that's why um, you know, the key thing is that all of us here are student leaders. So that means we have interacted with so many people in a way or the other. 
right? So that means we are building a strong social capital. But then, um, you know, the question is, what do you do with that social capital? Do you fulfill? Because there are usually standards that you need to achieve to sustain, you know, the trust of that social capital. That Here's the thing. You tell someone that, um, and this is a friend, you tell them that you will bring to them a blue pen. Is it a QA or a guidance? No, no, it's, a, it's just an insight. Uh, I, I'm just closing. Yeah, I'm just closing. I, I thought this was valuable. So you tell someone you'll give them a, a, a blue pen and then you give them a red pen. So that, that, that you know, uh, brings the question of trust to everything. So even as we maneuver and see, um, the, how do we handle the uncertain times? Let's really put in work uh, on ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'll give Sylvia the last opportunity to ask a question. Then we can wrap up. Um, I've seen a request from Nita, that's the Director of Career Services at uh, Daystar, requesting that we all have our videos on to have a group photo. It's acceptable. We have Newton asking to give a vote of thanks. Newton, you'll have that opportunity. Sylvia? Okay, good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, Sylvia, proceed. Okay, my name is Sylvia I'm from Tangaza University. I'm the class rep for the evening students. So we do part-time studies. And um, in Tangaza, sometimes I serve uh, as a communication assistant in terms of photography, videography, graphic design, and matters communication. So my question is, um, I, uh, Madam Jen has talked about LinkedIn. Uh, so my question is, you can try and personally, I can I can try and apply a job, the, the, the jobs that have been listed on LinkedIn, but I've never received a response or feedback. So I may not really know what I do wrong or maybe because I, I follow the procedures that have been listed, but I've never received feedback. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And then um, there's this thing of... Um, I had I had you mentioned that you're going to share the materials and somebody mentioned a channel. I'm not on that channel. So because this is my first session. So if you could kindly just share how I can join or how I can get the materials, I'll really appreciate. And then uh, pa, as per personal branding, because I've done communication, um, I would like to, to ask Madam Jen how I can go about it because uh, personally, I can think I, I have done the right thing, but maybe uh, the things I have not done um, in terms of con communication, because communication uh, is evolving day and night. So uh, maybe if I can get some response from Madam Zen, I'll really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Jen. I'll let you to answer the rest of the questions, save for the one asked about LinkedIn. So, Sylvia, the resources that we are sharing with you will answer some of your question uh, on how to navigate that path on, on application and building a strong brand. Um, probably if you still have a challenge, then in our next session, we'll be able to address them. Jen, over to you. All right. Um, there were several questions. There was... Uh the insights from the, the student leader, I think, did Brian. No. Yeah, it, it was quite quite a thing. Uh, I mean, he pulled a lot of insights. I hope everybody picked that. I would want to say about, when I talked about, it's very competitive and the power to bounce back. And I said one of the competencies you need is uh, adaptability and resilience. So the lady who's asked about, she's been putting CVs on LinkedIn and she's not gotten feedback. I would say, continue doing that. You know, we need to be a bit resilient when we are looking for what we're looking. And I give you my example personally, and I'm talking about many years. I pushed and there are all these views that you must know people or, and it's not always the case. I've interviewed so many people I have been in panels with very different people that have no idea who they are. 
and by virtue of they are shortlisted, they get jobs. And I can tell you guys, there are times you sit in interviews, you still don't get the right people for a job. So first things we need to work our mindset because they can also be derailers. If you have faith, you have you get a job, keep looking for it. But if you have the mentality, uh, you can only get a job because you know somebody, that becomes your reality. And I can tell you for a fact, I have hired people, I've gone to unis and um, through CCA, gotten entry levels, jobs for people that I didn't know about. Just because a uni gave us the 10 best students, they came maybe for a job, job shadowing, they search for interviews and they get jobs. So first to debunk that it's it's not, it could be happening, but it's not the truth. And we're in a community. So I don't want to say we're in a perfect community. So if one you do one application, do another. Even me, even at my level, I still look for jobs. Some don't come through, some come as regrets, some don't show up. So what is our resilient level to keep pushing for, for the opportunities? Sometimes they don't come color to say this is it, but keep pushing. Uh, for the social capital somebody talked about, you leverage on it. And all this is, it's a journey. I wouldn't say by fourth year, as you graduate, these are all solutions that will come. It's a journey. People have different journeys. Somebody say, Jane, how can I pay for my certifications? The first job I got as a whole graduate, I sat at a reception. And for a fact, it was the most humiliating for me. I had I had done a degree, passed very well, but there were no jobs. But I took what there is. But I can tell you, because of showing up, in that reception, I didn't stay there for six months. Already somebody was able to identify, like this one is different. She needs to take up something else. So there are very many dynamics we'll have around us. Everybody has different lines in life. So let's appreciate the journey and just be um, a bit sometimes patient. The people will go ahead of us that we're in class together, but life as a way of putting it a fair playing ground eventually. So Take your personal journey and keep pushing. I, we may not have time, but somebody can reach out if you feel like you're really stressed on that journey. Maybe you could share insights. But I believe as you show up, like I've said, receptionist was not something I was going to take. But I didn't have any other options. And I had one need that was survival. I needed to pay my bills, a whole graduate. I don't serve my customers very well, very well. But I would go back and cry and wondering, why did I go to school? If that is, I would have just gone to do reception after fourth year, I mean, form four. But life was a way of just allowing you to go through the process until you get where you are. So I think my message for you is keep pushing. It's an encouragement. It's no, I don't have a, um, a tag of an answer, but it is a journey. But as you keep doing the right thing, things will open up. I hope that helps somebody. I think I'll end it at that, Philip. Thank you very much, Jen. I think it's uh, about that time that we wrap up and uh, call it a day. It's been wonderful having all of you here for this particular session and um, particularly listening to Jen speak to your insights and by the way it's always interesting uh, reading through the chat box because um, there are some interesting conversation coming in some questions that are, are really interesting and I like the way we attempt to answer them even from our side as students and participants in this mentorship program. I want to invite Newton who had uh, asked to say the final words and uh, I'd urge all of us at this time to also obey what Neta had asked for which is uh, to turn on the videos. I don't know who is taking the group photo but somehow it should be taken. Thank you. Thank you Neta, uh, you volunteered. Okay, thank you so much Mr. Philip Pande. I want to appreciate everyone who has created his or her time to attend this wonderful event. Yeah, the Career Corporate Academy. I'm Newton Omondi, a student at Mount Kenya University, a class representative of my group, class of 2021. 
2024. I'm a fourth year taking public administration and governance. A big thanks to our facilitator, Madam Jen Gikonyo, and many directors of career and alumni services who has facilitated the events to be a success. I'll give a big thanks also to Mr. Afugwa Musumi, Director of Career and Alumni Services, Mount Kenya University. I really appreciate so much Madam Jen Gikonyo. She has given very wonderful insights to most of the graduates and students. It has been a very wonderful opportunity like yeah, most of us have been encouraged to have positive energy and a positive mind always. However tough things might seem to be, it's good just to be positive. We really appreciate that and look forward to having such wonderful moments and delightful conversations. A big thank you to everyone and may you have a wonderful evening or night ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Newton, for your words and kind words indeed to many fans here. Um, Nita, are you ready? Very well. As Nita takes the uh, group picture, I want to urge us to go through the materials that are going to be shared um, via the communication from Alex. Please be sure to update your LinkedIn profiles. If you don't have one, please build new ones. Uh, follow Co Corporate Career Academy. Uh, follow the trainers here, Jen Gikonyo. Follow myself, Philip. Uh, Pandit, you'll get insights, follow the directors of your career services, and follow the institutions and, and corporates that you would want to. You saw that from that presentation, we have about 60 million companies and 1 billion people on LinkedIn. What are you really waiting for? It's your chance, it's your opportunity to begin branding yourself on a professional platform that will give you the opportunity. Until next time, please let's um, wait for the next communication, and we wish you the very best in your institutions. Thank you very much, and have a good night, all of us. Thank you, and you too, Philip. I appreciate it. Thank you. Blessed Eve.